Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Compliance Online Live Webinar Scrutinizing Test Method Validation to Verify the Performance of a Medical Device. Our speaker for today is Jose Mora, is a Principal Consultant specializing in Manufacturing Engineering and Quality Systems. For over 30 years, he has worked in the medical device and life sciences industry, specializing in manufacturing, process development, tooling, and quality systems. Test method validation is one of the key areas where a company under external audit or unfortunately under a consent decree is one it's an area where there seems to be a consistent weakness uh, companies will test their products and they'll they'll try to validate their processes but then when it comes to looking at the test methods that they used um, they're falling short and this is a, a very important area to understand so what we're going to do is we're going to cover three cases three real life cases where test method validations were required and they hopefully the the types of processes involved are sufficiently different that it'll give you a good uh, flavor of, of those types of situations. So the first case has to do with inspecting the parts coming out of an injection molding machine uh, using a, a gauge probe. The second one has to do with uh, package pouch seal validation. And the third one uh, actually is much more than a washer disinfector system. It, it also involves passivation anodizing and other surface treatments um, washing and disinfecting of course was is part of the process we're gonna after going through the three cases we're gonna discuss FDA requirements for test method validation understanding uh, some of the global references standards and again we're gonna focus on the challenges and the situation itself so the first um, the first case we're going to talk about is the, <coughs> I'm sorry, I had a cough. We have a multi-cavity injection mold um, inspection fixtures. Now, what does this mean? Well, first of all, the product itself was an injection molded medical device, and each of these parts <clears throat> or components that would then later be assembled together and they had to work as a unit um, I believe it was a total of 14 parts that had to come and they all had a complex geometry the device itself was complex we were dealing with precise tolerances anywhere from three hundredths to three tenths of a millimeter now if you're Swiss then that's probably not very impressive as far as if you're in the watchmaking industry that's not very impressive but, but this is precisely what we were doing <coughs> it was a multi-cavity mold and by multi-cavity I mean 8 or 16 cavities there was a need for in-process inspection because these parts it was a hundred percent of inspection by the way and these parts of course had to be used for their process so it was non-destructive now some of the challenges were not only working in different countries but also different companies so the test method was developed in the US um, for use in the UK the development of the injection mold and the gauging system had to happen concurrently um, both for schedule reasons and for the reason that they are interdependent the manufacturer was a supplier to the final distributor and the design was I would I would say I would characterize it as co-owned and however the th test method and gauges were developed by a third party 
Okay, so the next the next um the next situation was a packet seal integrity testing. So this happened in in a company the company's no longer there. It was in in Virginia. And what they did is ho hospitals like to be they don't like to be in the inventory business. They they like to focus on the patient and the operation they have to do. They don't want to be in a stock room picking different medical device components or, or different medical devices when preparing for an operation. So this this company found a niche in the market and they said, okay, I tell you what, we will handle the inventory. You tell us what you want in your custom kit. We'll fill it with the medical devices you want, whatever you want, and then uh, we will we will put those in the kit seal it and sterilize it okay so great so this company was not really a medical device company per se they bought medical devices sealed them but they had to prepare them for sterilization and that seal had to be validated so they found out that with all the handling the header bag they were using was not as strong as they wanted so they picked a thicker material and of course they had to validate that new seal well, they weren't, they're really, these guys were not experts in, in process validation, so they hired us. So the seal testing was done to validate the, the seal method. Now, in this case, we could have destructive testing because we were validating the seal to make sure that it could consistently produce. Once you have the seal, you would have to destroy it to know if it's good. So you have to have a destructive test to gain that confidence. The other thing we had working against us, we had seven different pouch sealing machines. Now this, this plant was full of conveyor belts and, and at the end of each conveyor belt, there was a pouch sealing machine. So they're, they're making different kits. So they had five of the same model. And if these machines had been cars, they would have been from the 1950s, just to give you an idea of the technology we were dealing with. And then you had a newer model, and this would be like saying from the 1990s, so relatively new. Okay, so that's that's the situation. Okay, the next one is the surface treatment system. And like I said, washer disinfection was part of that, but this this was actually doing many other things. So this was a plant also in the US in another state and they were making small implantable uh, components that they would in turn sell to final medical device companies. Um, essentially this was a glorified CNC shop and they just happened to be making medical device components. By that I mean everybody, it was a, a small company of 20 people. Even the CEO had a tool cart next to his desk and he was an expert CNC machinist. So just to give you an idea, the QA manager was a CNC expert CNC operator and they said, well, I guess you're gonna run QA. Okay, hey, that's fine, it's 20 people, small company. They were all experts in CNC. Um, they were not there. They had to do cleaning and passivation, but that wasn't their area of expertise. That's why they brought us. Okay, so they were a secondary supplier. These were parts that would fit in the palm of your hand to give you an idea of the size. So they had different materials, aluminum, stainless steel, tantalum, and titanium. They also had peak, but peak is a plastic, so we didn't, we're not going to talk about peak. These were we're going to talk about the metals and then as far as the surface treatments if the parts were aluminum they would be anodized if they were stainless steel they would be electro polished everything was cleaned laser etched and in the case of 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 stainless steel they were passivated okay so depending on what the metal was, we, we would apply the different surface treatments. So now we're going to briefly go over some of the FDA requirements. Um, 
And this is stuff that uh, it's not the main part of my presentation, but I, I want to go over this. One of the things, um, FDA, of course, has 21 CFR Part A20. Now, if you did a search for test method, you would be kind of puzzled because they, they don't mention test methods. Now, why would that be? Well, let's ask ourselves, because 21 CFR Part A20 requires documentation. Does a test method require documentation? Of course. You have to have procedures and steps. Do you have to have environmental considerations? Well, yes. You have to control the, the environment. You have to qualify your equipment. Yes. So what I'm trying to tell you is everything in that standard applies to test methods. So that's why they don't mention test method because it's a process. And all of these provisions of 21 CFR Part 20 apply to test methods. There's no reason to specifically mention test methods. So that's why that is. Um, another excellent standard, and I, I actually prefer this one, the Global Harmonization Standard for Process Validation, the guidance, um, that is going to give you almost everything you need for validating not only a process but also a test method. Um, so everything that applies there applies to a test method. Remember what I said about the counterintuitive logic that you're trying to measure the variation of the measurement system as opposed to the process. There is also ISO 13485. Even though it's for quality management system, it talks about traceability, control of measuring devices, Measurement, analysis, and improvement. So all of that applies to to your test methods. 